Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new paint and talk. It's been a while since my last paint and talk. This time uh, I find a topic that was quite interesting from Vince Venturella and it's about uh, uh, being able to do armies of only monsters in Age of Sigmar or the monsters in Age of Sigmar. And I will extend the topic and I will call it uh, freedom. Um, uh, the freedom uh, when we uh, are building armies, freedom or versus uh, balance, right? So I think in workshop always uh, had uh, it's trying to work between the freedom to build armies, to be able to make a narrative games, to be able to to personalize your armies. There is always this balance, and then. Uh, be, uh, this freedom balance with the balance army, right? With the balance of the game. So if you give a lot of freedom when you're doing a game, uh, then this can be abused in the competitive uh, part and can make uh, the game unbalanced, can make some armies much very powerful or some builds very powerful. And normally they, they try to solve it by limiting uh, the number of miniatures by limiting the, ty the type of choices so and this has changed a lot in 40k and as well in Age of Sigmar. So going back to Age of Sigmar when it started uh, was Age of Sigmar was mainly open play okay there were no points there were you were only mainly counting wounds uh, they there were some fan base point systems but to be fair the only limitation at the beginning was mainly some fan base points and then uh, there were no limits if you want to do monsters and so there was a big it was very very freedom right there was a lot of freedom on how uh, to build your armies and then they created the three ways to play right the open narrative and uh, competitive and for me at least this, and this is my point of view uh, this is not that we use always the competitive setup, or most of the times we use the competitive setup, right? We count points and we also limit the type of units that we can do. So what means that uh, some armies that were only monsters, that were available, uh, were an option before, or some type of use, then uh, they were limited, suddenly they were limited and not uh, um, possible anymore. Okay, and I will say that I find this at the beginning a little bit too much limiting, right? Although you have all the alliances, I think the difference here is that you have all the alliances and you were able to do uh, uh, armies with the full alliance, so you had a lot of choices. It was in a way it was limiting, so you were not able, for example, to do an uh, army of only giants. But on the other side, yeah, you you can do the alliance of destruction, and then. And you have a lot of choices for for battle lines and for different types of units, right? Uh, no, the what well, just will have evolved more, and we have all these alliances, right, uh, or alliances, uh, where we have uh, the Bermintide or the Skavintide, Sorry, we have the Nagaj, or we have the Stormcast, and also people is not playing anymore in the big alliance, or it's less and less because you want to have all the benefits. Of the of, of these uh, alliances inside of the big alliance of the great alliance, right? Uh, what what happened is that army uh, that know that we are arriving to points that sometimes is a little bit too limiting for my taste, and I will also I will I will think that I would like to see something like what we have in 40k, right? That you can have different types of detachments or different builds. What that means is that, for example, in 40k, you, you also have this all this structure of battle lines. It's, there are more divisions than Age of Sigmar, but you can, if you want, you can make an army of only Imperial Knights, right? Uh, this is an option. There is an army dedicated only for Imperial Knights. And I would like to see something similar in Age of Sigmar, okay? I think this is something that uh, I like a lot. Uh, even in competitive games, you know that this is feasible, in, in, it's possible, there are some limitations, but you can do an army of only Imperial Knights, or, or you can, yeah, in, there is 
this level of freedom that today is not in Age of Sigma. And to be fair, with all the objectives where the, you have to, to build the army not to destroy the enemy, so the main object, the main purpose of your army is to uh, go for the objective on the table and score the objective and uh, do these points. I think the there is a pros and cons, and it's the same in, in Warhammer 40k, right? If you go with uh, only Imperial Knights, uh, you have the limiting factor uh, that you need troops to fight, right? And this is why the best lists are uh, you need troops to hold objectives, you need uh, mass on the uh, miniatures, mass on the table, right? Anyway, so this is why most of these armies to be competitive they also have Imperial Guard mixed uh, with the Imperial Knights. Okay, so I would think if, even if they allow behemoth only armies or they make factions where you can have only behemoth and we can talk about the giants. No, we, we have the first one that are the terror haste. Uh, you can make no army of only terror haste uh, with um, the characters on terror haste. So if we think that we can do armies with only monsters you still have the disadvantage that these monsters are a lot of points accumulated in one spot and they cannot be into place at the same time. Even they can lose the objective very easily because it's by miniature. So I have this problem, for example, with the Star Trek when I play with the Stone Castle Eternals, right? If the opponent is coming with a lot of um, infantry, my Star Trek is not holding the objective, it's the infantry holding the objective most of the time. So, yeah. So what I mean here is, I don't think the, mon the monsters are strong, are, can be very killy, but I don't think they are overpowered when you see all the different aspects of the game. And I think Age of Sigmar, now that we have the small alliances, I think we have they can have tools to enable um, more specific um, views, right? Uh, like, I think the Skaven is quite a nice example, right? So you can have um, a Skaven tight type of army where you mix a little bit of everything or you can go and focus in one clan and then you um, enable new battle lines. Okay, So why not to do this with some armies with the monsters, I don't know. Imagine, uh, I don't know the, the beast by far, but imagine that you can do a army of only chimeras and Chaos monsters. This will be quite nice. So, but today, yeah, you have the limitation that most of them are behemoth, and you can only put four. So maybe if you have a specific combination of troops, and you limit a little bit more the troops what you can use from the book, you can enable this type of builds, right? So it's for me, it's all. Uh, it's something interesting, something to explore. Sorry, I'm painting out. Of the and uh, I always like to see these new options, right? So I will really enjoy to see uh, armies of only monsters on the battlefield, uh, even if they crush me, because I think that I, I'm and also thinking on, from the point of view of painting, I always have more interest in painting monsters than painting big blocks of infantry. Although I have done that, so I have. Um, 200 escavens painted, so I have uh, a lot of escavens painted as well, like Vince Venturella. So, but it's something that I'm not enjoying that much, and this is why I'm ja I jump a lot. I, and this way, I was enjoying a lot uh, Shades Fire because it gives you the opportunity to paint very different things, okay, very different types of uh, miniatures. So, going back to the topic. I think it will be positive to be some to have some armies like we have in, in Warhammer 40k with Imperial Knights of only monsters. I think uh, you can play with the rules to balance. I don't think monsters are overpowered because they are quite expensive and they cannot be in several places at the same time. And uh, if they have infantry next to them, they are not holding objective because normally it's by number of miniatures and not by number of wounds, for example. And yeah, 
and this will be this will be mainly my point of view. So I would like to know know what is your opinion on that. Uh, you would like to see armies of only monsters like the giants, maybe monsters of chaos. Even in destruction, you can have an army, for example, of well, the giants can be destruction, can be also chaos. Uh, I don't know if in the allies, for example, in the the, I don't know how I call now, but the elves that are on, on dragons, maybe an army of dragons, this will be quite fun to do, right? This will be very fun to do. Of course, on narrative gaming, you always can do that. Because in narrative gaming, you can decide not to use the limitations of behemoth on the army, right? But in competitive gaming, I think this can be very interesting. I know these are extreme lists and this can have problems of balance. But I think I prefer, normally I prefer variety and originality versus balance. But this is my taste. This is why I don't want maybe tournaments. So that's all for this um, paint and talk. Now I'm looking forward to know what is your opinion. Uh, please leave in the comments below. Um, what do you think if these armies that are only monsters are good or bad for Age of Sigmar? Remember the first one is coming with the... A flesh eater course. Um, if I don't understand that, you can make an army with at least four terror haste and two heroes on terror haste. Okay. So let me know what do you think about this type of list. Uh, and yeah, and that's all for now. So give a like if you have liked this video. We're looking forward for your comments and as usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye.